Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Leanna. Today I have some tips for new resellers. And you know what, even if you are an experienced reseller, stick around for the video because you know what, maybe you need to be reminded of some of these things. So number one, you're going to sign up for your platforms. You're going to look at the platforms. You're going to decide what platform do I want to sell on. You're going to read the terms of service. You're going to read the community guidelines, the FAQs. You're going to learn what fees are involved, what it costs maybe to list or whatever. You're going to learn all that from the platforms themselves. Go in, set up your accounts, go through the platform, look at other people's listings, see how they use their titles, their descriptions, their photos, and take all that information in. But you also want to keep it a bit simple, so don't overwhelm yourself, but learn the platforms before you start to list things on these platforms. Learn how to filter through the uh, sold comps, because the sold comps and the sell-through rate, they're like your best friend in this business because you want to be listing those items that are selling, right? So learn how to filter, um, learn the guidelines, the fees, everything for the platform. <clears throat> you can also join some Facebook groups. I'm going to pin a comment down below with the two groups that I admin for, plus the one that Paul admins for, plus a couple others that I belong to that I like. Not all Facebook groups are created equal, and you know what? It depends on what you want to get out of them. That's going to depend what group you want to join. Join a whole bunch. Join a whole bunch of groups. Spend some time in there. Look through the through the posts. See how it goes, and, and decide then and there whether or not you want to stay in the group. I personally have left groups because of the drama and the nastiness and the disrespect that has happened in these groups with absolutely nobody taking charge of it. So I have left groups because of that. I come into groups because, you know what, I want to learn something new. I want to, you know, maybe see what other people are doing. Maybe I can try that out. Maybe I want to vent a little bit. Um, not too much because I'm, I'm fortunate. I have Paul who does the same business. So we vent, we bounce things off of each other all the time. But you know what, groups can be a, a plethora of information. There's a good word for you. So I absolutely recommend joining Facebook groups, join a community, find people. Maybe you know somebody in your life that does this business, bounce ideas off of them. So learn the platforms. Number two, you're going to learn your numbers. You're going to need to know what COG cost of goods is, what the fees are to list or to sell. You know, Poshmark is fairly simple. It's free to sign up. It's free to list. You pay 20% off the sale price. So if something sold for $50, you pay 20% on that. Um, there's other fees involved too. Sometimes shipping discounts, taxes, things like that. Um, you're going to learn your sell-through rates, your sold comps and your sell-through rates. Those are, like I said, your best friend. You need to know them so that you're picking up the right items so that they will sell. Um, what other numbers were there? Uh, comps, you know, I got them all. I got them all. There's probably more numbers there, but learn your numbers because it will help you in the long run so that you know that, okay, this cost me $5 at the thrift store. I'm going to list it for $20. And I'm going to list it on Poshmark for $20. If it sells for $20, that means I made $16 minus my cost of goods, which was five, means I earned $11 before taxes, before shipping it out and all that kind of stuff. And thinking of that about shipping, before you list something, before you list anything, have an idea how you're going to ship it. What box do will I need? What packaging material will I need? Do I want to do this? Do I want to add a thank you card? Blah, blah, blah. Have an idea of what you're going to do before you start listing, because there's nothing worse than listing something and not having a good enough box for it. So if you buy something that's a little weird and wonderful, that requires a special box, Try to find the box as soon as you list it. That way you're not behind the eight ball. Uh, the next tip is keep your money separate. This is something, I mean, we didn't do it right away. I don't know why, but we didn't. We did eventually have a separate account, separate credit card. That's all of our reselling stuff. So any shipping comes out of that account, any sourcing comes out of that account, all that good stuff comes out of that account. This will help you keep an eye on whether or not you're actually making money. 
So that account, all your earnings from both from all the platforms you belong to, go into that one account, and that's the only account you use to spend your money to get things for your business. It really does help you keep an eye on whether or not you're you're profiting. It really does. It's a simple thing to do. Just a separate little bank account is all you need to begin with. Uh, number four, don't compare yourself. You're brand new, you know, and you're going to make mistakes. I'm on this five years now and I still make mistakes once in a while too because we're human. People make mistakes. It's okay. Um, don't compare yourself. Knowing when you're in business and knowing what you're doing, knowing how much time you have and knowing your own life, Nobody else knows that. So if you only have a few hours a week to work on this business, you are not going to be doing the same things as somebody who does this full time and this is all they do. You know, so the results probably will be different as well. So keep that in mind. You're, you're going to hear stories that so-and-so made $10,000 this week and so-and-so made $8,000 this month. That's great because you can learn from them. What are they selling? How are they doing it? What are their pictures like? All that good stuff. But you don't need to compare yourself because it's just not necessary at all. You are new. You're going to practice and you're going to make it work. Practice makes progress. And that's all you can ask of yourself at the very beginning. Okay. Arm yourself with information. Try your best. Um, and with that vein, do your own research, try new things, try different things. Um, this is true because I, I keep thinking of bolos and bolos are a be on the lookout for, and they're, they're not a bad tool. If that's what you're going to call them, they're not a bad thing to keep in mind, but bolos change. They change constantly. So like last week, this bracelet was, you know, couldn't keep them on the shelf, but you know what, this month, you know what, everybody went out and bought these, so there's like so many more listed, and now they're not selling anymore. So the markets change, they get saturated with items. I should just wear this bracelet, because I keep pointing to it. Um, so do your own research, try things. Figure out, if you hear, okay, a Bolo brand, and you're at the thrift store, and you pick up an item, oh, that's that brand, still do your research. Do the sold comps, look at the sell-through rate, because you know what, the market could have changed from when you heard that that Bolo brand. It also, it just makes it stronger because you end up learning more about yourself and your business and what you have access to and all of that just to try new things. I've been doing this, like I said, for five years. This bracelet, I don't want to wear it. This could be one of those days. Um, and I still try new things. If you've been around the channel for a while, about five, six months ago maybe, I decided that I was going to put fancy backgrounds on all my cover photos. So I did. I went through my entire closets, both of them, Posh Canada, Posh US, and I added really pretty backgrounds to every single cover photo. It was a lot of work. But I've changed them all back to white now. <laughs> so I did all that work and it lasted for about three months or four months and I've been slowly going back to white. And I just because I just like it better. I learned that I didn't need that extra step of adding a fancy background. I found that it looked really good if you were looking at my closet, but it wasn't really making the items stand out in the search. So if it was against somebody else's listing, I just thought it was just not working so well. So I went back to white. Try new things. I try new things, new brands, new styles all the time because it's fun. And Sometimes it's successful, sometimes it's not, but then at least I know. Okay, last but certainly not least. This is business. It's not personal. It's not personal at all. Unless somebody actually really attacks you or something, but you know what I mean. If somebody gives you a low offer, it's just about what they can spend. It's not about you as a person at all. Do not be insulted. You can be frustrated because I can understand that being frustrating. But it's not personal, it's business. If I have something listed, say for $50, and somebody comes along and offers me 20, I'm not gonna like that. I'm gonna be a little frustrated with that. That's a little bit low in my opinion. But you know what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double check my numbers. I am going to look at the solds to see if maybe the market has changed and to see if maybe I have it listed for too much now, because that happens. And then I'm gonna make the decision probably to either accept it, because my numbers were because the numbers changed or I'm going to counter 99% of the time I do counter 
any lowball offers. Once in a while, it's okay and it feels good to hit the decline button. Just so you know, it's not going to harm you, you or your account if you do it once in a blue moon. But anyway, <clears throat> it's not personal. It is business. I do understand that, you know what, sometimes it's frustrating and you, you need to vent things. Absolutely, that makes sense. Uh, but don't don't get your knickers in a twist. It's, it's okay. Everything's going to be just fine. Anyway, those are just a few really sort of quick and very simple tips for brand new resellers. If you're an experienced seller, did you need to be reminded? I know sometimes I need to be reminded about my numbers because I sometimes forget about sell-through rate. And once in a blue moon, the not comparing myself. That one I have to sort of take a step back on once in a blue moon. But anyway, that is it for today. It is Tuesday. It's a beautiful day out today. I think I might go for a walk. I'll be back on Friday. I have a couple of story times for you about Poshmark that we're going to talk about because you know what? They're just crazy. I don't know. Anyway, that is it. I hope everybody has a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye.